when as King Henry ruled in this land, the second of that name, besides the queen, he dearly loved ye a fair and comely dame most peerless was her beauty found, her favor, and her face, a sweeter creature in this world it could never prince embrace her crisp locks lie threads of gold, appeared to each man's sight, her sparkling eyes, like orient pearls, did cast a heavenly light the blood within her crystal cheeks did such a color drive, as though the lily and the rose for mastership did strive. Yea Rosamond, fair Rosamond, her name was called so, to whom our queen, Dame Eleanor, was known a deadly foe the king therefore, for her defense against the furious queen, at Woodstock builded such a bower, the like was never seen most curiously that bower was built, of stone and timber strong, an hundred and fifty doors did to this bower belong and they so cunningly contrived, with turnings round about, that none but with a clue of thread could enter in or out and for his love and lady's sake, that was so fair and bright, the keeping of this bower he gave unto a valiant knight. But fortune, that doth often frown where she before did smile, the king's delight and lady's joy full soon she did beguile for why, the king's ungracious son, whom he did high advance against his father raised wars within the realm of France but yet before our comely king the English land forsook, of Rosamund, his lady fair, his fair wealth thus he took my Rosamund, my only rose, that pleasest best mine eye, the fairest flower in all the world it to feed my fantasy, the flower of mine affected heart, whose sweetness doth excel, my royal rose, a thousand times he bid thee now farewell, for I must leave my fairest flower, my sweetest rose, a space, and cross the seas to famous France, prouder bell to a base dot but yet, my rouse, be sure thou shalt my coming shortly see, and in my heart, when hence I am, ye'll bear my rose with me. When Rosamund, that lady bright, did hear the king say so, the sorrow of her grieved heart her outward looks did show, and from her clear and crystal eyes the tiare scushed out a pace, which, like the silver pearled dew, ran down her comely face her lippus, erst like the coral ready, did wax both wan and pale, and for the sorrow she conceived her vital spirits fail and falling down all in a swoon before King Henry's face, full oft he in his princely arma her body did embrace, and twenty times, with watery eyes, he kissed her tender cheek, and till he had revived again her senses mild and meek. Why grieves my rose, my sweetest rose? The king did often say because, quoth she, to bloody wars my lord must part away. But since your grace on foreign coasts, among your foes unkind, must go to hazard life and limbe, why should I stay behind? Nay, rather let me, like a page, your sword and target beer, that on my breast the blows may light, which would offend you there. Or let me, in your royal tent, prepare your bed at night, and with sweet baths refresh your grace at your return from fight. So I your presence may enjoy no toil I will refuse, but wanting you, my life is death nay, death ill rather choose. Content thyself, my dearest love, thy rest at home shall be, in England's sweet and pleasant isle, for travel fits not thee. Fair ladies brook not bloody wars, soft peace their sex a delights, not rugged camps, but courtly bowers, gay feasts, not cruel fights. My rose shall safely here abide, with music pass a the day, whilst I amonge the piercing pikes my foes seek far away. My rose shall shine in pearl and gold, whilst he may in armor dodge, gay galliards here my love shall dance, whilst I from foes go fight. And you, Sir Thomas, whom I trust to be my love's defense, be careful of my gallant rose when I am parted hence. And therewithal he fetched a sigh, as thug his heart would break, and Rosamond, for very grief not one plain word could speak and at their parting well they might in heart be grieved sore after that day fair rosamond the king did see no more for when his grace had passed the seas and into france was gone with envious heart queen eleanor to woodstock came anon and forth she calls this trust high knight in an unhappy hour who with his clue of twine thread came from this famous bower and when that they had wounded him the queen this thread did jet and went I where lay to Rosamond was like an angel set. But when the queen with steadfast eye beheld her beauteous face, she was amazed in her mind at her exceeding grace. Cast off from thee those robes, she said, that rich and costly be, and drink ye thou up this deadly draught which I have brought to thee. Then presently upon her knees, sweet Rosamond did fie, yea, 
and pardon of the queen she craved for her offences all. Take pity on my youthful years, fair Rosamond did cry, and let me not with poison strong and forced to be to die. I will renounce my sinful life, and in some cloister bide, or else be banished, if you please, to range the world too wide. And for the fault which I have done, though I was forked thereto, preserve my life, and punish me as you think ye me to do. And with these words, her little hands she wrung full often there, and down along her lovely face did trickle many a tear. But nothing could this furious queen there with appeased be, the cup of deadly poison strong, as she knelt on her knee, she gave this comely dame to drinky, who took it in her hand, and from her bended knee rose, and on her feet did stand, and casting up her eyes to heaven, she did for mercy kaye, and drinking up the poison strong, her life she lost with all and when that death through every limbe had showed its greatest spite, her chiefest foes did plain confess she was a glorious white her body then they did entomb, when life was fled away, at Godstow, near Oxford town, as may be seen this day.